All right, I think let's get started. Um, welcome everyone to the second day of container plumbing. Um, so the session we have right now is running confidential workloads with Podman from Sergio. If you have any questions, please um, put them in the Q&A tab so we can go over them after the talk. Um, go ahead, Sergio. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, here I'm going to present the work we've done so far to enable uh, Podman to run confidential workloads. Uh, but first, let's start with a, a very, very brief introduction to confidential computing. Uh, this is a complex topic, but we are going to just to uh, talk about uh, some of the highlights. Uh, the, uh, the formal definition is that confidential computing is the protection of data in use by performing computation in a hardware-based at the state structure execution environment. Uh, this definition comes from the Confidential Computing Consortium, uh, but what does it mean in practice for us? Well, for the case for, for the case we care about, which is today, which is uh, virtualization-based uh, Confidential Computing, it means that we need a hardware that provides us with uh, two features. Uh, one is the ability to run um, virtual machines with uh, memory encryption and uh, integrity protection with uh, RAM that is both encrypted and uh, protected uh, uh, and integrity protected. And the other is the ability to generate uh, an attestation, which is a, a signed measurement of the memory contents in a way that can be provided to a third party. Uh, both abilities must be provided. The, the one without the other is, is, is no use. It's, uh, it doesn't make the cut. Uh, we need memory encryption because otherwise uh, the host will be able to easily extract secrets from this trust execution environment. Uh, we need uh, uh, integrity protection because uh, in other case, the host will be able to alter the contents of the memory of this trust execution environment and as such potentially alter this behavior. And we also need the uh, attestation because uh, the initial payload that is going to be loaded in this, into this virtual machine slash trust execution environment uh, it needs to be it needs to pass through the host at some point. So if we didn't have a station, it would be very easy for the host to alter the contents of the initial payload and inject malware or read uh, and inject any kind of or, or read any kind of sensitive data. So uh, we need both of them at the same time. Now. Uh, the truth is that uh, virtualization based confidential computing is not exactly new. Um, it was at least available on the market, at least since 2017, uh, when uh, AMD introduced the first APIC servers that provided SCB support. Uh, and SCB and SCBs are, are in mainline Linux and are ship enabled in most distributions. But the truth is that even though it's there and uh, it provides some very interesting uh, features, uh, barely anyone is using it in for real. So we started a couple of years ago, we started thinking about why was that? And uh, we came to the conclusion that doing confidential computing uh, the right way is complicated. It's very complicated because yes, the hardware gives us the primitives, but it doesn't tell us uh, how to use them. And uh, what you need to measure and how are you going to measure and when are you going to uh, generate the attestation? Those are, are questions that depend heavily on the context. So we started thinking about ways in which we can make computer computing more accessible to, to the users. And we thought that instead of trying to provide a completely different experience and a completely different workflow, having to introduce these users to this workflow, we could extend an existing workflow, such as the container workflow, which many users are very familiar with, and enable it to actually use Confidential computing for running this kind of uh, sensitive uh, workloads. And we also noticed that we could uh, very easily do that by extending Podman and CRAN and integrating that with libkran. Libkran is, is a virtual machine monitor uh, written in Rust that instead of being a, a separate uh, binary and an executable, is provided as a dynamic library. So you can uh, link to it from other programs and instantly gain virtualization and computer computing capabilities. So now that we had an initial idea, we also need to define exactly 
what are we going to provide the, uh, to the users? And what's conceptually, what's a confidential workload in our, in our mind? And we started by setting a, a set of goals. Um, the first one is that it must be compatible with the system container tools and workflows, obviously. This is one of the main goals we had uh, because we wanted to reuse the system workflow. And that was the lead motive. And this means that uh, this kind of workloads need to be uh, deployed and serviced as an, uh, an OCI image, because it's, it needs to be something that you can manipulate with Podman, with Builder, Coscopio, that you can push into a registry and pull it from it. So it needs to be an OCI image. Uh, another uh, requirement is that uh, all the information that uh, the context, the uh, uh, VMM, and the hypervisor need to actually run this virtual machine has a trusted execution, execution environment must be inside that OCI image. It must be contained in it. We don't want users to need to pass any kind of annotations or to do any kind of local per node configuration just to run this kind of workloads. We want all the information to be self-contained in a single image. But on the other hand, we also must meet the confident computer requirements because otherwise it will be pointless. Yeah, and this means that the disk must be encrypted and it must be integrity protected. Uh, there is no use in having a, a RAM that is encrypted and integrity protected if the storage is not protected and encrypted. Uh, we also uh, need that the memory contents must be easy to measure. And in this context, being easy to measure means that uh, we need to be able to easily identify what we need to measure. Uh, in this design, it's easy because all the components that need we need to measure are provided by Litka runners itself. And another requirement is that the host leaks must be limited, uh, even if that means breaking some of the conventional container semantics. Um, in practice, this means that we cannot support things such as volume mapping, and we cannot support things such as uh, running Podman exec and running a new uh, exec inside a container, um, inside a confidential workload. Uh, because that will break the walls that we need there to uh, provide the confidential computing guarantees. So thinking about these goals, we came up with, uh, this, uh, uh, with this idea that first, uh, a confidential workload must be a regular OCI image, uh, because again, we need it to be compatible with the system container tools. But it needs to be an OCI image that contains at least the TE-specific parameters that we need to actually deploy it and create a virtual machine as a trust execution environment. And we need to have a lax encrypted this image with the contents of the another OCI. So what this allows us is to, uh, for the users, to provide tools for the user to pick, develop their uh, application as a regular container and eventually transform this container into a confidential workload simply by picking up the contents of the container and putting them into an encrypted this image that in turn will be part of another, a new OCI image that will be back this confidential workload. Um, about the execution context, the execution context is going to be provided by the virtualization based uh, VM dash uh, slash TE, which is provided and managed by Libkeran. Uh, it has a well-known set of initial memory contents because all of them are provided by Linux kernel FW, uh, which provides a minimal kernel, minimal Linux kernel, uh, firmware, and an integral file system. And this also implies that uh, upgrades are very easily, are very controllable. So you just need to regenerate the, uh, the measurements once uh, every uh, uh, when you uh, when you update the library set, when you update the kernel firmware. And this is something that can be coordinated very easily. Uh, this contest doesn't allow any kind of host leaks except through the network. The network is the only way in which the TE can communicate with the outside. And uh, the, uh, of, of course, this kind of contest provides memory encryption, incredibility protection, and decision by relying on the underlying computing and computing hardware. Uh, at this moment, we support ACB, ACBES, ACB SMP, which is the whole ACB, AMB, ACB family and we also support uh, TDX. Um, and now, there's something I would like to highlight. Uh, when we are talking about integrating LibCRAN with CRAN, we are not talking about replacing 
the container context with a virtual uh, virtualization based uh, context. But instead, we are nesting them. So uh, when you run one of these confidential workloads, Podman and CRAN will still create the container context. They will use C groups, they will use namespaces, they will use EC Linux to create that uh, uh, isolated context within the host. And then inside that container context is where, where libkran will create the vm t and inside this vmtsd vm slash t is where the confidential workload the application uh, the user has developed is going to be running uh, this means that we are not only protecting uh, the vmm the trust execution environment against host inspection but we are still preserving all the security guarantees that the container regularly provides and there is another nice advantage for this approach, and that is that all the networking activity that happens in the confidential workload uh, is going to be perceived from the container context has activity that, uh, that could happen from any other process within a container context. In practice, this means that if you are using sidecars for uh, uh, injecting uh, rules or, or uh, IP table rules, or uh, for doing uh, uh, um, for taking a measurement of the traffic and, so, and doing any kind of traffic shaping, that still works out of the box. You don't need any kind of specific support for confidential workloads. Now let's take a look at how each data context is protected with confidential workloads. Uh, in the center of the image, we have basically the same thing we've seen before, but slightly bigger. Uh, the host OS, the container context managed by C round, then the VMTE managed by Luke around, and then the guest OS slash confidential workload. This VMTE access uh, a region of memory from the host that is transparently encrypted and decrypted by the hardware. So the, if the host tries to access this region of memory, it will not be able to access it, or if it can, it will only find uh, encrypted garbage. This depends on the uh, confidential computing technology the host is, is uh, the hardware is are actually providing. Now there is an exception of this rule, and that is there will be some uh, regions of memory that will be shared with the host and will not be encrypted for storing things such as virtues, but just merely an implementation detail. From a conceptual point of view, we can say that the whole memory encrypted that is going to a uh, whole data that is potentially sensitive is going to be encrypted. Now, on the right side, we also have the storage, which can be any kind of arbitrary storage you can use with a regular container. And inside here, we have the, conf the confidential workload OCI we talked before, which contains the confidential workload encrypted this image, uh, which is this lax encrypted this image. Now, the encryption and decryption will happen by software inside the context of the TE. So it's the confidential SDT, the one that will be open the lax device and will operate or through it. So the host has no visibility of the data in plain text at any moment. And to be able to open this LAX uh, encrypted this image, uh, the guess, uh, the confidential workload will retrieve the secrets from this component on the right, which is the on the left side, sorry, which is called the attestation server. And now the attestation server is a component that is trusted uh, for some reason, perhaps because it's running on a TE, perhaps for other reasons, we are not going to cover that in this talk, but it's one that stores the, all the expected measurements for the confidential workloads we have registered in the system. So once this TE starts up, it will take, it will ask the hardware to make the, to take a measurement of the memory contents, to sign this measurement, send it and to uh, send it to the guest operating system. The guest operating system will send, will contact the attestation server with this, attest with this uh, attestation signature and it will send it to it. The attestation server will be verify the signature and, uh, and compare against the specter measurement. And if it matches, it will pick up the secret and it will send it back to the guest operating system, to the confidential workload to be used to unlock the uh, encrypted this image that we have in the confidential workload OCI on the, on the right side. Now, we talked talk, talk before about this idea of taking a regular container, a regular OCI, and transforming it into a confidential workload OCI. Uh, the actual process is fairly simple, actually. So what happens here is that uh, we need to create a, a this image. 
uh, which is basically a file in the host in the context of the uh, of the uh, builder or uh, the build operating system. On this this image, we are going to format it with lags. We are going to generate a random encryption key. Uh, we are going to expand the contents of the original OCI image into this lax encrypted volume. Then we are going to create a new OCI image that contains both this this image and the TE parameters we said before we need to actually launch a VM with the capabilities. And once this one is created, we are going to potentially push it, push it to a some registry and also send both the encryption key uh, the, that is needed to unlock the storage and the measurement and the world parameters to the attestation server we've seen on the uh, previous slide and we see here on the bottom. Now, uh, before, jump, before jumping into the demo, uh, for the last uh, couple of years, every time I talk about this, uh, about confidential workloads, I will ask about what's the difference with uh, Kata confidential containers. So this time, instead of waiting for your question, I just went ahead and made it part of the presentation. So the, the main difference from a practical point of view between uh, confidential workloads and conf Kata confidential containers is that Kata is able to run multiple uh, uh, containers in the same TE, in the same VM, while uh, libconfidential workloads intends to run just one uh, container per TE by design. And also Kata uh, aims for supporting all the container, all the conventional container semantics. Now, uh, this of course comes with a, uh, with a cost. Uh, uh, Kata containers is, is uh, confidential containers is more complex and requires more components, but it gives you these additional features. On the other side, uh, for enabling confidential workloads, we just need to add libkram, which is a very small piece of software, to an already existing stack, which allows us to meet the uh, certain confidential uh, computing guarantees with a very, very small addition in the stack. But if you ask me honestly, uh, which one to choose between the others, it honestly, it really depends on what you intend to do with them. Uh, if you plan to use, uh, if you intend to deploy, to migrate existing container deployments, Kata will beat you, uh, give you better compatibility. So it's likely that it's going to be, uh, you're going to uh, find less problems this way. Uh, if you intend to do a cloud deployment that are going to have that, potentially going to have many containers per pod, then again, Kata uh, will provide you with a lower uh, footprint. On the other hand, if you intend to deploy, so you have a, deploy, a cloud deployment with many single container pods or no pods at all, in the sense that everything is just a single container or even a container per tenant, uh, such, which is the case of functional service, then with the run, you have a lower footprint and such, and such a, a lower TCO. And of course, if you are uh, aiming for a non-cloud deployment, which yes, they still exist, uh, the, uh, with, uh, the, with container workloads, you just uh, can leverage on the existing container infrastructure and it just uh, adds a little bit of, of, of um, yes, need to add libcaron to the mix. So it's just, uh, it allows you to do the, the to meet the confidential uh, workload confidential computing requirements with a very small baggage. And this is ideal for such thing for uh, scenarios for contexts where you have uh, in the in the edge or automotive or in general embedding contexts. So let's jump now to the demo, which is going to be live. So let's hope for the best. Now here I'm connected to an ACB capable machine, which is an AMD Epic server, and what I have here is a is a very simple. Golan uh, program, which is basically opens an HTTP uh, server and service this secret through TLS with some SNAKO certificates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a regular container from it. Container. Build, container file. I'm going to give it the name cpdemo. Okay, now I'm going to run this container. I'm going to close for 8080 and CP demo. Okay, so, and I should be able to contact it to obtain the secret. And 
here the secret. Now, while this communication via HTTPS has, uh, has been encrypted, this is very easy from the context of the host to extract the secrets from this uh, container. So if I go ahead and inspect the container, To find out his process ID, I can find it out and confirm this is basically the binary we built before. And now I can simply dump its memory contents. And if I inspect its memory contents, I can see uh, that the secret is, is there in plain text. In addition to attacking it from the memory side of things, I can also do the similar thing from the storage. So I'm going to spec it one again, once again. I have the process ID here. So I'm going to find out this mount. OK, here they are. And let's take a look at them. And we see that we have here the binary, again, in, in plain text, so we can simply obtain the secret here too. So uh, in this case, this where Warlord is not protected against host inspection. Now we are going the same thing, but this time with uh, we are going to transform this container into a, a confidential workload. So what we are going to do is we are going to make use of this script, this tool, which is called OCI to CW. Uh, ideally, this should be uh, the uh, ideally build that, build that should be able to do this for us. But uh, for now, we are using this this script, and uh, to this script, we need to provide it with the DE config, which is uh, we what we said before that it contains the parameters that are needed for the hypervisor to actually launch this DE, which contains the workload ID, the number of CPUs, the amount of RAM. The technology we are going to use, we are right now we are supporting both the CV and SMP. Some uh, DE specific data, and then the attestation URL uh, to which the, the workload needs to contact to send the measurement and obtain the lag secret in exchange if the measurement is successful. So I'm going to run OCH to sell you, specifying this container, uh, this uh, configuration file. I'm going to pass. The SCP certificate, this is something specific about the SCP. SMP, for instance, doesn't need this, uh, this argument. I'm going to give the original OCA image name, and I'm going to provide also a new OCA image, which is going to be the same one, dash CW. Now it's asked us to run it into build and share, which we are going to do right away. And now what it's doing is what we talked before, is basically automatically creating a, a file, which is a this image. It's going to generate a random encryption key. It's going to be layered, formatting it with lags. It's going to uh, mount it somewhere, copy the contents of the original OCI image, and then, as you can see here, create a new OCI image with the this image among all the configuration file and in addition to the configuration file and the certificate. Now, by the at the end of this process, it will also register it with the attestation server, which we have running right here for the demonstration purposes. So we can see here, we just save a uh, register workload. And now we should be able to run it using runtime, which in krun has a runtime. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to also pass the 8084 and cw I think this should be it. Now, this, uh, this time it will take longer because uh, we are asking the hardware to authenticate uh, the memory and generate the attestation and encrypt it. But the attestation it has already done that. It has already sent the attestation and the measurement to the attestation server. It has received back the receipt back the key, which has been used to unlock and mount the, the LAX encrypted loop phase system. And the HTTP server has started just yes, as uh, we ha it happened in the uh, non-encrypted, in the non-configured workload case. Now, I should be able to do curl again with this one. And yes, we have the same secret. 
But let's try to start the secret the same way we did before from memory and both storage. So let's find out the process ID. And here we find a hint that something's different because instead of finding our hello open shift, the example, we see that this is running with CRAN dash k run, which means it's running in a VM and more, more precisely in a trusted execution environment in this case. And we can still dump this whole memory of this VM, of course. But since the memory is encrypted, we should not be able to find anything interesting on it. And it doesn't. Now, in some cases, uh, we are talking, and in this case, we are, we are able to dump the memory of the VM, of the trusted execution environment. It's not uh, of use to us because it's encrypted. Uh, there are other confidential computing technology in which directly you can, the host cannot even dump that memory. So uh, it depends on the configure computing technology, but the result is the same, is that the, the host is not able to extract plain, plain text secret, find plain text secrets into that memory. So let's try to do the same thing with the storage. Proxy uh, D, and we're going to do grab lower, find out the end points. Okay, here we are. And let's find what it says. And this time, what we have here is not the binary, but uh, this image that is lax encrypted. And if, of course, being encrypted, if we try to find something interesting on it, we won't be able to do so. Uh, now, you may see that we have other things here that uh, we haven't talked before, such as the entry point. Uh, this entry point is simply a binary which its only mission is to do this. In case you run it, this you attempt to run this OCI image without uh, without the k run runtime, without specified the k run runtime, you get this, this message. This is the only purpose of the binary. This, this is, there are no secrets here, there are no secrets here, and there are no secrets in the certificate chain either. And the only secrets we have are in this uh, disencrypted image. And that's basically all I had today. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, I'll be around. Thank you, Sergio. Um, there are two questions in the Q&A. The first one is uh, T-E-E-L-U-K-S. What, what do these acronyms mean? T-E-E is uh, a trusted ex execution environment. Uh, which in this particular context, it just means a VM that is using relying on hardware to have memory encryption and, uh, and attestation. And LAX is uh, just uh, one of the, well, the, the main uh, way in which you can encrypt disks in, in Linux is one of the, the, the mechanisms to do that. All right, thank you. And the next question is, can libk run coexist with running VMs, running KVM and or VirtualBox? With running what exactly? Running VMs that are running KVM and or VirtualBox. Well, Confidia Computing, if the question is about nesting, uh, Confidia Computing does not support nesting by design, not with libk around, not with any other technology. And now what you can have is uh, on the same host, uh, containers that are running with, uh, with encryption, as T is, and regular containers running with other runtimes. All right. Um, so we are out of time over here. Thank you so much, Sergio. But I think there are two more questions in chat, if you can just take a quick look and answer sure. them. My um, question. But yeah, thank you all. And um, next session is containers on cars. <laughs>